We're looking this week at the coming of Jesus Christ, and there are actually two comings of Christ. The Old Testament prophesied that. We looked at that a little bit yesterday. Uh, and that was certainly confusing to the prophets, I think, and confusing to uh, the Old Testament saints. And, and until the actual uh, resurrection and the ascension of Christ and his promise to come again, it was probably confusing to the apostles and the followers of Christ. Uh, today we have a much better insight because we can look back and we have the full revelation of the New Testament and we have the promises of Christ who said he would come. And so we're looking forward to the return of Christ. Titus calls this the blessed hope. Uh, there, there's lots of hope found in Scripture. This is called the blessed hope, and it certainly is because it is what all of us who are believers look forward to, Jesus Christ returning. Uh, so we're going to look uh, at the rest of this week at the second coming of Christ, the promised coming yet to come. It's a hope, uh, and therefore it is a blessed hope, and it's a hope that we have great confidence in as we look forward to the return of our Savior. We're looking, first of all, at uh, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which gives, a very, gives us a very detailed and clear uh, picture of his return. We often call this the rapture because this is the time when the Lord catches up his saints. But I want you to notice some contrast this time. We've looked at this passage, I'm sure, before. But notice some contrast between the first and the second coming. In 1 Thessalonians 4.13, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you do not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. So uh, as uh, he opens up, uh, Paul does, about the issue of Christ's return, uh, he knows that some believers have already passed away. And uh, if, if you don't have good information, if you're uninformed, then you might say, well, that's it. There's no, there's no hope for them. They're gone. But Paul wants to make it very clear that this is not the end game. Uh, there is great hope in front of us. And so he wants us not to grieve because we do have hope. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. So the incarnation initiated Christ's ministry on earth, but here the reference is to the fact that he ultimately went to the cross and resurrected from the dead, but he also he's going to come back here. And it says uh, he will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus, that is, the, the saints, uh, the, those, who, uh, those believers who have passed away already. Uh, whose spirits or souls are already in the presence of Christ, they are going to come back with him. Now, at the incarnation, uh, Christ came as a, a physical infant uh, conceived by, by the Holy Spirit and then birthed by Mary uh, in a literal sense. It, it was a baby. There was no other saints coming down with him. The angels did proclaim him, but there's no other believers there, so it's a very different picture. In many ways, Christ was uh, very much alone. Some shepherds uh, showed up, the angels proclaimed, there was mom and dad and some animals, but, but most of the world had no concept and very few other people knew anything about Jesus' birth that day. Verse 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain, until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. So here we have the second coming. He is coming from heaven. So notice the, Jesus did not come from heaven at the incarnation. He was physically born. The angels were in the heavens shouting and singing the praises of the Lord. But, uh, but Jesus himself did not come from heaven at this point. Uh, and, he, and he didn't come with the shout of the voice of the archangel. Uh, there was no proclamation in the sense that the world would, would know. The angels, again, at the incarnation did proclaim him. But this is a different thing with a shout of the, of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And so this is a, a very, uh, a, a, in some sense, a very loud uh, proclamation of the coming of Christ. It is, it is vocal. It is loud. And the angels are participating and the saints are participating. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And so those who have passed away will now be resurrected from the dead, given new uh uh, glorified bodies uh, that uh, that are regenerated and are changed entirely. Verse uh, 16, 17 said, Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall always be with the Lord. So here at this picture of the second coming, uh, we are going to be changed as well, given, uh, re given bodies that are glorified, to be with the Lord forever, but we're going to meet him in the air, it says. It doesn't say here he comes back to the planet at this point. He comes to the atmosphere. He comes to the air, and we go to be with him, and, and, and we'll be with him forever. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So in a very real sense, what we have here is the second coming of Christ. It actually comes, perhaps you might say, in two stages. It comes, first of all, in this form is in the rapture. And then there is the actual time when the Lord himself comes to the earth. And we want to pick up on that one tomorrow and show the difference. So I hope you can join us.